Hello there, World of Tankers, and welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Drudels Blitz, and in today's video, we are going to be taking a look at the reskinned M3O, the Scepter, as you can earn this vehicle for absolutely free as part of the Luxury Lounge event. The Scepter is a pretty cool vehicle, and it's a solid tank, but I should point out that statistically, it is exactly the same down to everything, the DPM, the penetration, the interclip reload, the aiming time dispersion, adds mobility to the normal M3O. So both of these tanks are exactly the same. So essentially, this is just a tech tree vehicle. The only difference between these two tanks is that this one does have the reserve track mechanic. That means when your main track gets destroyed, as we can see, you can still reverse at four kilometers per hour. It's nothing huge, but it is still you being able to reverse when your track is destroyed. In today's video, I'm not only going to play this tank a little bit and talk about the vehicle, but the first thing I wanted to break into is how to get your hands on the vehicle and is it worth it to get well is it worth it to get is a subjective question if you like the way the tank looks and more specifically you don't have a lot of vehicles to earn credits it's a good vehicle even though it is a reskinned tech tree tank it still does earn a lot of credits it's a premium i earned 170,000 just on my latest win in the vehicle it's a really really enjoyable tank to drive and it'll make a lot of credits in the process so that's solid but if you don't care about the credits and especially if you don't care about the collectible part of this tank i wouldn't really suggest to go for the vehicle during this event now if you did want to go for the tank it's a weird way you're able to earn it for example every ace you get is going to affect how many of these diamonds you're going to get. If you get a mastery badge, you're going to get 180. But if you get an ace tanker class one, you're going to get 60. So it's only like 12 for a class three and like maybe 30 for a class two. So depending on how well you play at the game, what tank you play specifically can greatly impact how many diamonds you're able to earn. If you're playing a tank that you know, it's kind of like the Caro 45 ton where not a lot of people have it or the 5A where the ace bar is really low. You'll be able to get a scepter a lot easier than if you're playing a super popular tank like the Tiger 1 or Tiger 2, which has an ace bar that's super high because everybody plays it. But apart from that, it's going to be probably, I would say, about two to 250 battles to get your hands on the scepter, depending on your skill level. Maybe even up to 300 if you're a bit on the lower side. We also have some pretty cool things like this camo. I think this camo looks absolutely sick. It's actually an absolutely epic camo. This will be the main reward I'm trying to get because I think this is one of the coolest looking camos Wargaming has released in a very long time. So good for Wargaming actually making a decent camo. I'll give them credit there. So I'm going to be getting my hands on that. Pretty cheap is only 1,500 diamonds. Uh, the 10 times 2 boosters are amazing, or the 2 times 10 boosters are amazing. That is 20 times the XP in just two battles. So let's say you get a 1,500 XP game, that's 15,000 XP. If you do that twice, that is 30,000 experience you're making in two battles. That's insane. So that's also a really solid reward. You have the car that you can get in the back of your garage... Eh, I don't really care about that. I wouldn't suggest to get it. It's a waste. You've also got the deluxe limited edition containers. These are good, especially if you have a lot of credits or a lot of resources to waste like I did. They're pretty good to get your hands on. But overall, really the main reward I would go for is the scepter and the camos. Apart from that, I would obviously get those times 10 boosters but there's not much really else in this event that is anything spectacular it's not a bit a bad event by any means uh it's free so i can't really complain i mean for the people that always complain wargaming makes crummy events they didn't have to make an event at all is what i always say so i'm happy when wargaming releases something like this and it got me about 40 50,000 gold. I think it was more than 40,000. It was like 45,000 gold I got from this event in total I calculated, which is not bad at all, especially for something that I essentially got for free. I mean, I've just been playing this game every day, making videos on it, and then I get about a billion credits at the end of the year usually, and then I just exchange those credits in at the luxury lounge, and there you go. That's the only problem with credits in the game normally, is there's not really a good way to exchange credits for anything. World of Tanks PC has the ability to exchange credits into premium vehicles sometimes for example the uh the Le the lion that's what's called the lion on world of tanks pc i'm pretty sure you could get with either free experience or credits uh, unfortunately when it comes to blitz wargaming just doesn't really have any events like that the only one i've seen is the stayer of but apart from that yeah unfortunate but that's kind of how it works 
But either way, let's make our way over towards base B. Now, sometimes I like to go towards A, but I don't know. I just kind of spawn this way, so it's pretty easy to just drive right in front of me. They have an m 70 a Bulldog, and an M41D. So essentially two Bulldogs. They have a Shark. That's definitely a strong tank. Same for, honestly, all their heavies in Tier 8 are strong. The Shark, the Emil 1, and the Action 10. The T28 prototype is not a hard tank to fight, but it does have a nice gun. So I still do have to be a little cautious when fighting a vehicle like that. We've got the uh, majority of the enemy already spotted here. So I'm just going to cross on through. And there's one shell into the M7, yo. Two shells into the M7, yo. And three. And there you have it. Long live the yo. That was 955 damage we were able to deal. And that's what I always really, really like about autoloaders is that... I dealt all that damage, and I've lost zero hit points myself. And I can just chill here for another six seconds, and then when we finally do have our clip, I can just completely poke and get some damage out again, hopefully. So let's see, we got the shark in the back, and even though I can't shoot any of these guys right now, I'm just going to send this M41D. This guy's going to be in a world of pain. There you go, there's one shell into the M41D, two shells into the M41D, and three. Long live that player. So once again, we've already done about what 18 1700 damage at yeah, 18 12 13 more seconds i'll have another clip ready it's just it's a really solid play style any autoloader is really really strong and i say it a lot but it really is true autoloaders are by far some of the strongest classes of tanks in the game there's one shell to the shark two shells into the shark and three there you go so that shark just lost 900 hit points we have still i should point out not lost a single hit point this battle so all that's left is the enemy emil one off to the side he gets cleared and there you have it that's a pretty easy victory if i do say so myself not only was it a 7-0 but we almost did about 3,000 damage only firing about nine shells that entire game so i don't think we're gonna get an ace i could because this is a very rare tank to see right now it was a second class. Okay, it seems like a lot of people have started to get their hands on this vehicle. So with the second class, I earned in total 30 diamonds, which is what I thought. So nothing crazy, but it is still 30, which would mean it would take me a lot of games. It would take me about, yeah, 100 games for me to get my hands just on 3,000 diamonds. Yeah, and you need 25,000 to get your hands on the tank. I'm not sure if you do get 10,000 gold if you get the vehicle. I have the scepter. And I managed to land on it twice, um, or actually three times during my live stream opening the crates, which gave me 30,000 gold because every duplicate you get is 10,000 gold. So I'm kind of hoping that if I get enough diamonds for the scepter this event, I'm going to be able to exchange them in for another scepter and get another 10,000 gold because that would be really, really solid. But I guess we'll find out. This is a tier 9 battle. Not that many tier 9s. They only have a IS-8 and a Ritter. But, oh boy, I thought that Moishin was going to spin me out, but we're fine. Uh, but still some strong tier 9s in general. That Ritter is a very, very scowy tank. We got the Indian Panzer, the Lightweight. Oh boy, I have a feeling that their whole team's going that way. I would. I mean, why wouldn't you? Uh, I will capture this base really quick. It's never a bad... Oh, okay. Well, the T-32 went over here. Interesting. Um, I was going to say, it's never a bad idea to capture a base because you don't know what the enemy's going to do. Um, but this T-32, uh, he's just going to waste time is the problem. I don't really want to go for this guy. But I'll do it if I have to. There's one shell, there's two shells, and there's three. Okay. Oh, the IS-8's over here as well. All right. Well, not too bad. Go ahead, 53 TP. I'm going to push towards this IS-8. Well, never mind. Our mediums actually might be able to hold for a bit of time. If that is over here, then that means I was really expecting that IS-8 to push over towards that side of the map. But if he's over here, that's a lot better for us. So a couple more seconds. I'll have my clip loaded. There you go. IS-8 fired. There's one shell two never mind i don't really know how that didn't pen but at least we penned the third one i'll take it that is it's actually gonna i thought he was gonna pen our some event but i guess he didn't ha huh, this is gonna be a close battle i mean our 53 tp is hopefully gonna finish off this guy which he did nice uh but that's a lot of death over there i mean that is a lot of death i'm aiming it on that ritter and I'm gonna take a blind shot i'm gonna take a couple blind shots oh boy come on Ah, I was really hoping I could hit that Ritter. Ha. Huh. Well, our Moishin's full, which is good. With the Moishin being full health, that does give our team the ability to at least survive a bit, you know? Because he's got 2,400 health. 
So that that's good. It looks like that lightweight was heading over towards base C, and he is. I'm not exactly sure why, um, because I can just kind of drive over here. So I'm just going to head over towards base C and uh, possibly get this lightweight. We're going to find out. Where is he? Come on. Oh, it looks like he's on the other side of it. All right, well, let's head over here. Come on, lightweight. Where'd you go? Um, there he is. Well, we got one pen into his vehicle. I'll take it. Penetration's a penetration at the end of the day. There you go. Two pens. All right, not too bad. We took about half of that lightweight's health off, and we were able to capture the base again anyway. So there you go. Base C has been captured, and that lightweight bled half his health for no reason. Not bad at all. I, I can't complain about that. Um, our Moishin looks like he's going to try and capture base B. And ah, the only take that really scares me is that Ritter. I don't know where the Ritter is. And it's it's a nasty tank. It's really the best way to describe it. It is a very, very nasty vehicle that you don't want to be shot by. But I'm hoping that our Moishin... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice shot into that Centurion. No, that one missed, unfortunately. Uh, but I was going to say is I'm really, really... Ooh. Come on. Come on. Show me your turret, you, you stinker. Oh. Nah, it doesn't look like he's going to. Rip. Well... I can just chill here with one shell and stop the enemy from doing a lot of things. I'm going to back up, though, because I, I can just reload my clip. There's no point to do anything. I mean, our Moishin is still very healthy, and he's not going to die. The 53 TP still has some health, um, but I'm just going to use that Moishin as bait. I mean, our 53 TP got a nice pen out, and even though he's bleeding a bit, I don't think it'll matter too much, especially with that Centurion over on the rails. Long live the Centurion. That's perfect. And, uh, let's see. I'm gonna aim it on where that Indian is over there, but... Bonk. There you go. Long live that guy. And... Ooh, I coulda... I coulda gone for that, but it, it wasn't worth it. Come on, Indian. What are you gonna do? Bonk. There you go. So, with that, uh, this will be a pretty easy win, honestly. I mean, we're already up to 900 on the base capture, and I'm pretty sure that lightweight is gonna go into base C, which he did. Uh, I'm just gonna chill here for now. I mean, I can wait right here... And uh, just reload my clip a couple more seconds, and then we're going to get over towards the side of this guy. Here we go. Hello, Mr. LT432. How are you doing, bro? Oh, you're not doing too well. That's a real shame. Uh, I'm going to go for an HE. Why not? Let me back up so the motion can hit him. And there you have it. 1,000 on the base capture. That was a pretty solid game. We were able to deal 4,000 damage, come out with a victory. As you can see, the Scepter is a really good tank. And everything I did in this battle, I could have done in the M3O as well. Both of the tanks are really good. So even though this is based off a tech tree, you shouldn't throw it off and say it's a bad vehicle. It's a really, really good tank. We made 234,000 credits, 180 diamonds. So it's pretty good event overall. It's, it's easy to get your hands on. It's free. Uh, I, I would suggest to definitely take advantage of this event. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.